first episode of the Good Graham Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Yes, indeed, we have reached the milestone of episode number 300. As you can see, here with my trusty sidekick, Barbie. Oh, I love what care. Um, so, yes, it's only taken about six years to get to this point, but, you know, um, I know there's a number of you guys out there that have uh, probably been watching from the, from the very beginning, so big, big thank you to you for sticking with me over this length of time, and a, a big thank you to those that have come along uh, since that time and uh, continue to um, you know, support in comments and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yes, yeah, I'm... Um, I'm glad you've uh, uh, stuck around, and um, hopefully, we'll, um, we'll, we'll six years time. We'll, we'll be doing episode number six hundred. Who knows? Um, anyway, so I thought, what's going to be a fitting way to celebrate this particular milestone? And I thought it was very apt to have a look at uh, one of my favourite non-Scotch uh, distilleries, that being uh, the Langerton Distillery in, in Switzerland. And over the last two year or so I seem to have collected a number of samples of uh, their special releases so uh, a big big thank you to Robert at Highfern who uh, the UK distributors for Langerton for the samples uh, for today's episode of the show and um, I think this is going to be a, a, a rather intriguing episode of the show it has to be said. Um, why do I like the distillery? Well the thing and I've said it several times the thing is about customers and non-Scottish distilleries, the question you always get asked is, what is so special about it? What is so different? And most of the time you say, well, there isn't really a great deal of difference, uh, apart from the fact that obviously each individual distillery has its own character and so on and so forth. And you can't say that Japanese whiskies are different to Scottish whiskies because of X or Y or, you know, it just doesn't work that way. But when you taste uh, a whiskey from a non-Scottish distillery, you kind of want it to say something a bit different. And certainly Langerton definitely does that. It has a real distinct herbal kind of character, which to me reminds me very much of Provençal herbs. Um, it may well be partially down to the fact that they use wine casks continuously. Most of the, certainly the unpeated spirit is matured in ex-Chardonnay casks. It might have something to do with the fermentation, the distillation that, that also enhances those kind of herbal characteristics because that herbal characteristic does seem to be a very uh, continuing sort of reference point throughout the whole of the range, whether it's aged in, in um, wine casks or not. And um, talking wine casks, I mean, yeah, everything is matured in wine casks. I mean, I do believe that they have bottled a uh, wholly American oak aged um, release but I've not physically seen it and I've not tasted it but I would love to just to see whether that herbal character carries on into that particular bottling and then I can be more sure of, of where that herbalness is kind of coming from I mean like I said my guess is it's probably a combination of all three things that I mentioned um, but it would be nice um, if I could actually get hold of a sample Okay, Robert? Right, okay. Um, so, anyway, uh, not a great deal to say about the distillery because I've done episodes of the show on the distillery before, uh, but as you know, it is quite an old distillery. Well, the, the company's been in existence since uh, 1857 when I think it was originally founded as uh, a brewer's, and um, the current sort of range of, of, of single malts that they, they produce really didn't begin until um, around about 2005. So um, th this is kind of like the, the modern snapshot of the distillery. And it's been gathering praise, you know, ever since I first started tasting it. And that's probably ooh, about two, three three, maybe four years ago, I guess. Um, I forget now. Um, yeah, it's dementia for you. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so, yeah, not really a great deal to say about, about the distillery itself, so let's have a look at the special releases that I've got here in front of me. Right, okay, so uh, as we've got a weird and wonderful selection of different cast types, I'm basically going to taste them in... Um, a stylistic order rather than sort of a, in an age order which is why we're starting off with the 10 year old 
so this was a single Chardonnay cask. It was distilled in March of 2008, bottled in 2018. Uh, cask number four, bottled at 49.12, as are all of the uh, special releases uh, bottlings. They're all bottled at the same ABV. So the second one we'll be looking at is uh, the uh, six-year-old Saturn's cask finish. So this initially spent uh, um, just about, about five years, uh, just four and a bit years in uh, Sardinay before being finished in uh, the Saturn's cask for 15 months. It was distilled in December of 2010, bottled in August of 2017 and the cask number was 283. Third bottling we'll be moving on to is the six-year-old Oloroso sherry finish. Again, initial maturation in ex uh, Chardonnay cask before being finished in uh, Oloroso for ten weeks. Ten weeks! Look at the damn colour on that. I mean, that was first fill sherry for you. Um, that is dark. Uh, any longer than that, and it would have been black. Black as Black as Barbie, in actual fact, I think. Um, so, yes, that was distilled in December of 2011 and bottled in August of 2017. Uh, the next bottling we'll be looking at is the Kadira cask finish. So, uh, again, ex Chardonnay uh, to start off with and seven months finishing in the Kadira cask, which is um, from the uh, Alentejo region of Portugal, I believe the the the, um, the winery where it comes from is run by a, a Swiss guy. Um, didn't look up who it actually was because well, it didn't really matter at the end of the day. Uh, so this uh, was distilled in 2012 and bottled in 2018. Uh, the next bottling we're looking at is this one. This is the um, Quinta du Zambiero cask. Uh, now, this differs slightly in that it wasn't originally matured in Chardonnay. It spent its entire uh, six years in the wine cask. Uh, it was distilled in 2011, bottled in August of 2017. So it'll be interesting to see how it differs uh, from the Kadira cask um, finish so uh, I think that's going to be uh, quite interesting and we're going to finish with the uh, six-year-old uh, port cask finish um, again obviously from um, Portugal um, so yeah so again uh, initial maturation in ex Chardonnay cask seven months finishing in the port cask uh, distilled in 2012 bottled in 2018 so there you go that's this week's little lineup um, let's kick off with the 10 year old then shall we <laughs> right okay so let's see what the nose gives us then shall we lovely fresh balanced I mean Sometimes, I mean, I find Chardonnay casks a bit sort of, hmm, it has to be said, but with the Langerton spirit, it just works really, really well. You're getting a little bit of honey, plenty of barley, again, that slight Provencal herbal kind of character, um, a gentle wininess. Um, it's, got some, it's got some nice maturity as well. Um, there's a, a little bit of oxidised fruit, you know, a touch of oxidised apple, apricot, I mean, it's got such a, a, a lovely aromatic quality, uh, it has to be said, um, unlike that bit. Um, cute. Um, that is an absolutely stunning nose, really stunning. And like I said, it's, it's you know, you think about sort of you know, wine cask usage and how casks can be very dominating the spirit. Um, the, the Langerton spirit just... just just seems to just shrug it off and you know this is very very impressive there's even a, a little bit of butteriness kind of coming out sort of almost kind of sort of you know um, burgundy-esque kind of butteriness um, hmm absolutely gorgeous Let's see what the pass like
mm, spicy, whiny, oxidised apple and grape on the finish. Kicks off with the sort of the, the buttery kind of white chocolatey oak um, to start off with. Then moves into the sort of the, the barley, the Provencal herbs. And then comes back with the fruit. There's a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of tannin on the middle, but it's all kind of harmonious, all really nicely balanced. The finish is absolutely sublime. It lingers and again, the progression, the balance is absolutely spot on and and as you well know that's <laughs> that's my main criteria for for judging whiskies does it have balance does it have progression is it damn good mm, mm. oh yes okay so let's move on to the saturn's cast finish let's see what the nose gives us on that again Provencal herbs, um, barley, a little bit more obvious late harvested kind of honeyed sweetness uh, on the nose. Touch of, of almost kind of hyacinth possibly, that kind of um, honeysuckle hyacinth, that sort of slightly musky kind of white floral kind of note. Um, a little bit of coffee in the background. Um, really, that buttery kind of um, uh, new French oak is now starting to come through quite strongly. Um, but the Saturns is sort of standing up to it. I'm still getting barley and 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 spirit character. Um, that is just a, a just a gorgeous nose. I mean, that is really balanced. I'm getting. All of the elements that you would expect from the um, the spirit and the different casks. Um, really toasty, slightly nutty now. Um, stunning. <laughs> Just absolutely stunning. Let's see what the power's like. The toasty, nutty French oak is kind of a thread that goes all the way through this, and it's sort of again on the on the on the on the the beginning. Uh, on the, uh, initially, you get a lot of that sort of um, winey saturns, late harvested honey kind of character, um, which slowly sort of uh, you know dissipates. Um, so a, a different type of progression to the Chardonnay cask. Uh, which are which is absolutely gorgeous. I, I, again, um, like I said, that the the sort of buttery oak is kind of like the bedrock, the continuing theme, with the other flavours kind of moving around it. Again, slightly herbal on the finish. Um, quite almost a little, almost coffee, a little bit chewy malt as well, possibly. Um, again, fabulously balanced and just a, a, a different. Um, style of progression to the Chardonnay car yeah to the Chardonnay cask so um mm, really good right okay so let's move on to the Oloroso sherry finish let's see what the nose gives us on this end shall we a lot of sherry I mean considering this spent what 10 weeks um it really has heavily influenced it. Um, I like the combination of the herbal sherry cask mingling with the herbal spirit character, but I'm less kind of blown away by this, it has to be said. Now, like I said, the, you, when you start playing around with sherry butts, it's, it's difficult to sort of maintain, I think, the balance. I mean, certainly this doesn't quite have the balance of the previous two. Um, two bottlings but it's clean no sulfur there's there's plenty of sherry dried fruits there's a little bit of treacle touch of tar again like i said there's got a pleasant kind of combination of the uh herbal oloroso with the herbal spirit character i'm not getting a great deal of barley it has to be said so it's not quite 
to me got the complexity of the uh, the previous two, but it's 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 nice. I mean, let's see what the power's like. Again, like I say, on the nose, a pleasant combination of the herbal spirit and the herbal oloroso. But uh, the palette is all about the oloroso. It's 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 big, it's whiny, it's treacly. It doesn't quite have the balance or the progression uh, of the previous two. Um, again, very clean. And if you like this kind of style of whiskey, uh, I think it's really you, you'd love it. Um, to me. It doesn't quite have the complexity. It certainly isn't sort of giving me raptures, it has to be said. I mean, you know, it's very clean, it's very sherried, um, and just, just lacks a little bit of balance as far as I'm concerned. Um, but still, you know, you can't argue with the quality of it. That is quite impressive. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's move on to the Kadira cask finish. So I think this particular winery, I don't think, I'm not sure if it's the same as, uh, I don't think it's the, the same as the um, Quinta de, Zamb de Zamb ugh, Zambugero, um, but I think they, they grow predominantly um, Turiga Nacional, I think, um, if memory serves me correct when I was looking it up. But anyway, let's, uh, let's see what the nose gives us on this. Soft, dusty, a lot of barley in actual fact. Um, I mean, it's only spent what seven months in the uh, in in the um, the wine cask, but it's given it a sort of a gentle sort of black red fruit kind of spiciness, a bit of earth. Um, got really nice structure to it in actual fact. It's got a kind of a tautness. Um, which um, the others don't seem to have, and it's probably more down to the uh, the, the, the wine cask. Again, sort of aromatic, balanced. Um, again, slightly herbal, earthy. I mean, that is a lovely nose. Again, you know, just just has so much balance, and and it's got a lightness and a delicacy, yet a lovely kind of like full. Um, rich, dense, or multi kind of depth to it. Oh, lovely. Let's see what the power's like. Lovely kind of dusty, chocolatey, dark chocolate kind of cocoa finish. Um, black fruits, bit of tannin, a uh, bit of earth, bit of herbalness, touch of barley. Again, really lovely balance. Not probably got the progression um, that the Saturn's cask uh, finish showed. Uh, it does kind of like sort of pretty much unload on the palate all in one go. And you go... Um, but the complexity is just absolutely fabulous. And bear in mind, this is only six years old. Um, I mean, it would be interesting to sort of see um, how a ten-year-old, the, the ten-year-old spirit would, would be finished in in uh, uh, this type type of cask. And I'm sure that in due course, uh, once they've obviously built up significant stocks, they probably will start to do that. Hopefully. Um, I've got to love the vibrancy of the young spirit. I mean, you know, it's not fainty. There's none of this kind of like sort of hard barley or um, mari kind of notes that you often get with these sort of uh, young European uh, whiskies. It just feels pleasantly mature. I mean, I don't know whether that's down to the, the, the climactic conditions in um, Switzerland. Um, that allow it to sort of you know, be, uh, I mean, 
mean, it's not exactly kind of a subtropical country, is it now? Um, so we're not like talking like Paul John, where you know it all just sort of evaporates and right. We've got to get this out pretty damn damn sharpish, but uh, you know the oak content uh, or the oak um, uh, characteristics is. It, 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 seems to be sort of like enhanced and obviously the, the spirit matures that much quicker um but this just has a sort of a lovely kind of i wouldn't say sort of overt maturity because it's got a sort of like a youngish fresh character but it's ready that's the key um the, there's no off notes there's no sort of any of that kind of stuff it is just ready at this age and um mm, that's good. Okay, so let's move on to the Quinta de Zambugero cask. I, bloody names! Oh, anyway, let's see what the nose gives us. Obviously, a little bit more heavier on the wine cask. Um, but it has that sort of similar kind of dusty, possibly a little bit more fruitiness, uh, a little bit more dark fruits a little bit more cherry but again really pleasantly balanced i'm still getting a touch of the provencal herbs a little bit of barley there's a touch of tea leaf tobacco leaf as well um it's got a a little bit of an edge to it i mean i'm not saying i'm not talking sort of industrial kind of barley edgy sort of um faintiness it's got a kind of tobacco-y kind of slightly leathery kind of edge to it um, which you know really does kind of make this different from the um, Kadira cask finish um, but again I'm still getting the barley I'm still getting the Provencal herbs although they are a little bit sort of sat in the background it has to be said but yeah the balance is still there you know um, yeah cherries Mm, so the pass like. Mm, mm. Again, kind of cherries. It's, it's got a, a bit more of a tannic structure to it this this particular one um a little bit sort of less expansive although until it gets to the finish when it sort of like opens out really nice and i'm getting sort of a bit of buttery kind of oak um i'm guessing sort of the uh and, and the cask initially wasn't sort of like particularly well used um because i'm still getting quite a bit of the oak vanillins which is would kind of indicate that it was sort of probably used maybe once maybe twice for uh, wine production um, again really spicy balanced again barley a little bit of herbal notes um, cherries black fruit um, but we're not talking sort of overkill on the on the wininess again it's just just fabulously balanced uh, I suppose again it's a bit like the Quintus Zambura cask um, the uh, no the Kadira cast sorry uh, in that it kind of delivers pretty much all at once and you're sort of like having to sort of pick your way through all the all the complex characteristics it doesn't quite again have the progression of the Saturn's cast but oh I mean that is just fabulous and that finish mm, absolutely gorgeous <laughs> And finally, on to the port cask finish. So, yeah, seven months, I mean, you know, a faint sort of reddish kind of hue to, to, to the spirit. Um, so let's see what the nose gives us. A little bit spicier, possibly, than the um, Zambu Giro. Giro? Oh, God, I've tasted too much whiskey and I can't talk now. Um... Dustier, earthier, um, possibly a little bit more whiny. Um, that is quite the sort of the, the, the whiny fruit is certainly a lot more dominant. It's a lot more there. Um, 
but again I'm getting a touch of barley I'm getting a touch of Provencal herbs I'm getting some spirit character it's not just one dimensional um, softly tannic um, just gorgeously fruity. I mean, it really is. And again, like I said, you know, this is only six years old. Um, fantastic stuff. Let's see what the part's like. Oh, that's fruity. I mean, that the seam of kind of, you know, porty black fruits kind of like, again, runs right the way through the, um, the palate from the beginning to the end. And you're getting sort of little bits of spice, a little bit of pepper, herbal character again, touch of barley, mouth watering, some lovely tannins. It's giving it a lovely structure. But again, there's plenty of that slightly syrupy kind of um, whiny fruit to balance that up salivating on the finish it has to be said I mean that is absolutely gorgeous um, ah, spices linger uh, on, on the palate I mean that is that is just really very very good um, and I mean again like I said six years old and it just has so much complexity for such a young spirit I mean that is just really impressive <laughs> Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. An absolutely fantastic lineup. Yes, I know um, these particular bottlings are not cheap. They, they, they were retailing for what, around about 80 odd quid for a 50 CL bottle, but you know, the presentation was lovely. Nice kind of wooden box um, and you know, sort of fluted kind of decantery kind of bottle. Um, really, really looks the business. And um, you know, I had a, an order in before Christmas and they're pretty much all gone because, you know, I, I can't help but sell them because they are, they are brilliant whiskies. Um, the uh, single Chardonnay cask, absolutely gorgeous. Lovely progression. It's got that nice mature kind of, uh, you know, sort of oxidised fruit kind of coming through on the palate and the nose and just just delivers um, absolutely wonderfully. Um the Saturn's cast finish, you know, I, I, possibly my favourite of all of them, it has to be said. I mean, it's really difficult to pick a favourite, but I just love the progression on that. I just loved how it just slowly unwinds and sort of like, you know, goes through the gears and, you know, it delivers on the palette. I mean, that really ticks all my boxes, it has to be said. Unlike the Oloroso Sherry finish, um, which I'm a bit cold about, to be honest with you. Again, I can't fault the quality of the, the, the bottling itself, and it's all about personal taste at the end of the day. And, you know, I, I just cannot really get my head around the sort of like, you know, the over Sherry characters. You know, it is blanketing. It, it doesn't have the progression of the Saturn's cask. It doesn't have the complexity of the Kadira cask or the Port cask. It is just just a little bit too one-dimensional. It's too in your face. It's too obvious. Um, and to me, you know, it's, it's just not what I am looking for in a, a whiskey at all. But, like I said, if that is your kind of cup of tea, then, you know, absolutely nothing wrong with it at all. Um, the Kadira cask, again, you know, brilliantly balanced, absolutely lovely. Um, the, the combination of the um, the spirit character and the, and the wine cask and what have you just, just works amazingly well. Um, the Quintus Zamburu cask, um, again, really balanced for something that spent its entire sort of uh, six years in that particular wine cask. I mean, incidentally, the core range features, uh, these were all obviously unpeated, I mean, you know, because I didn't mention the word peat at all, but they do make a peated um, malt, um, Old Bear, which is aged in ex Chateau Nerf cask, which again, you know, is really, really well balanced. And, uh, and you know, if, you know, your pockets don't 
kind of stretch to the 80 odd pound yeah check out the sort of the core range they do because you know they are very very impressive but coming back to the um uh the, the quinta de samburu or bujero cask um really well balanced lovely kind of structure a little bit more tannin a little bit more obvious cask character but still really nicely balanced and the port finish um Again, just as I've said throughout the whole of this, wonderfully balanced, um, not probably got the progression, progression of the Saturn's cast, but certainly the complexity uh, is definitely there. I mean, like I said, it's just a case of unpicking it as it's on the palate and... Um, you know, what a tasting, you know, I mean, you know, what a 300th episode of the show, I mean, I'm obviously going to have to go somewhat uh, to kind of top that, and, um, I, you know, I just love this distillery, I mean, I just love what they're doing, and um, I really would like to taste their uh, their spirit, um, I'd love to taste their new make in actual fact, because then that would kind of give me a, 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 a big kind of clue as to where that kind of herbally kind of character comes from. Is it the new make? Is it the sort of the interaction between the spirit and the casks? Um, so, you know, if, 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 if Robert, if you're watching, which I'm probably certain you will be at some stage, uh, or anyone from the, the distillery is kind of watching, you know, I'd love to taste the new make and I would love to taste the American oak and, you know, just, 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 yeah. Just because I'm asking, all right, you know, can't mm, humour me, please. Anyway, um, that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. I hope you've enjoyed the, this uh, um, very special um, episode of the show. Um, next week, um, well, um, no, I think it's still going. I think it's going to be an interesting episode of the show. Uh, I've got something um, interesting up my well, so, well, if I had sleeves, it would be up my sleeve, but. Um, Oh, they're all interesting, aren't they? Come on, you know. So anyway, um, and before I go, just just one final point. Um, nothing to do with these whiskies whatsoever. Um, the next whiskey tasting that I'm hosting at the shop is on the twentieth of uh, this month. There are still too many tickets I'll be honest and say still remaining that haven't been purchased. So um, if you if you want to come along and hear me waffle about whiskey and taste some hopefully interesting uh whiskies and you haven't purchased your ticket uh, pop over to the website get your ticket and um come along to the evening because it's you know they're gonna be damn good you know so um anyway until next week uh all that's left to say is good afternoon and good running <laughs>